a bill that would reimburse deputy registrars for the revenue lost due to the troubled rollout of the Minnesota Licensing and Registration System, or MINLARS, is being considered in the Senate. Impacted business owners recently testified before the Transportation Committee. I've spent over $25,000 restructuring my office to create a new workflow because everything is different in the office. I've added additional workstations, computers, printers, I mean, et cetera, et cetera. My payroll has gone up between $1,000 and $1,500 a week. My overtime is way up. It's a good thing my wife and I own the office together. It's a good thing we're committed to working almost every weekend to minimize that because it's going to reach a point we're probably going to be committed. The value of my business has plummeted. It takes longer and longer to do these transactions. So how, how am I going to make this money? How am I going to pay for these bills when I'm making less of that $6, less of that $8, and less of that $10 than I used to make? So we've been trying over the past year and a half to figure out how to make it go faster so that we can pay these bills as I talked about, and it isn't working. We have a family business. My parents own the business. And we saved $150,000 for a rainy day. Well, it has been pouring, as you can imagine, for a year and a half. We are down to $45,000 in our savings account. Just this week, I had to take another $2,000 to pay my payroll to make sure my people get their money, which they deserve. They're working very hard. We used to be able to complete 600 apps a day. Now, with the same number of staff, I can only do about 300. So effectively, I've doubled my staff. That's a lot. This year, I've had to take a loan from my life insurance policy so that I can keep paying my employees. Even after hiring five new people, we still can't keep up with our pre large transaction counts. This also means less money to the state in a timely manner. What I absolutely do not understand is that DBS and Minute keep getting emergency funds continually for staff and MINLARS, but the def deputies have gotten no help and are using personal monies, retirement, loans, credit cards, mortgaging homes, and borrowing against life insurance policies. Cities and counties are robbing taxpayer dollars from other areas so they can survive as well. Between payroll expenses and loss of transaction, Productivity, my office is sitting at a $1,413,161 in a penny loss. Now joining me in the studio is the bill's author, Senator John Jasinski. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. Recently, you met with Governor Walls at the Hanscom Motor Vehicles office to test out the software for the transfer of specialty license plates from one vehicle to another. How did that go? You know, it, it went pretty well, but it, it did show there was a, a two-step process to get one thing done. So that's what they've been arguing about before was sometimes it takes two things to get one thing done or one transaction, and they only get paid for one. So they actually had to do two steps to get one transaction done, and the other one through, other one went through well. So we had one work very well and one had a little bit of a glitch. Okay. So the Senate voted overwhelmingly uh, 52 to 12 to extend more money to continue working on the MINLAR system, mm -hmm. the Minnesota License and Registration System. Governor Walls signed that into law last week. Mm -hmm. Is this the right thing to do? I, I think it is. I mean, these deputy registers are the ones that are stuck in the middle. So if we, we stop and go to another system, they're going to be the ones that are going to suffer. If we go forward, we're hoping, and again, I, I give a lot of credit to Governor Walls. He has come in and, and made more interactions in this system since, we, since we've had in the past. So I think he really wants to get it fixed. So I've always been you know, taught to give someone the benefit of the, channel, or benefit of the doubt, and they want to do it, so let's do that. Uh, right now, we spent about $110 million so far. If we stop now and start all over, you know, we're going to start spending up money again. I think this is kind of a final fix, and, and we put a lot of things into place to make sure that if, if this doesn't work, we're going to search for something else. We have a three-party uh, panel that's going to look at it from the outside and decide if this platform of software can get to where we want to be. So I think we got to get this through because otherwise the deputy register are stuck. If this system doesn't work and these employees go away that we're funding, there's no, no repairs for the system. If something would happen, there's nobody there to fix it. So I think we need to go forward. It's tough to spend the money, and I agree. Everywhere I go, people say, don't give them any more money. Don't give them any more money. But if we don't, these deputy registers who already suffered enough are the ones that are going to be held hostage, and they're the ones that are going to suffer again if we don't. Right. So in a sense, they're... As they're, well as the public. The public they're works. caught in the middle in, in much of this. So just in case it isn't well known, we're talking about deputy registrars. What is it that they do? 
You know, they are a private business. Most of them are private businesses. They can be run by the county or they can be run by the municipalities. What they do is they're contracted by the state uh, to provide a service to people. So they're the ones that are there, the, the small business people that are transferring titles, that are transferring license tabs, they're getting your driver's license ready. So they basically are a private business, most of them, or a county or a city, and they are the servants to get those things done. Private businesses conducting state necessary Correct. work. Yes. And that's confusing for a lot of people because sometimes they're located in a city hall or sometimes they're located in something would think it's a government building, but they're actually private businesses. Okay. So the bill that you've authored would allocate $10 million toward relief for the deputy registrars to partially compensate them for all of the excess expenses uh, that they've faced, the headaches since the Minlars rollout in July of 2017. Is $10 million enough? Well, we had a stakeholder meeting on uh, last Thursday, just a few few days ago, and we're looking at that. Um, you know, the ten million dollars was a bill that we did last year that would, based on transactions, would pay them back. So, based on a transaction count, kind of across the state, dispersing it back to them. But that was for one year. So, you know, they've been into almost twenty-one months now. So, we really need to look at that. We've been working to climb up with a number that that will satisfy them, so that they they know that if they take this dollar amount, they're not going to be looking for any future future things is what we want to do this year is make sure we have that finite amount. So we're going to try and get to an amount that they are comfortable with that's been for 20, basically 21 months plus the next six months. So we want to have it ready for the whole thing. Now potentially some have been impacted more than others or maybe it's the same. How would the money be distributed, whatever that final amount is? So there was two different formulas and the formula that we're working on right now is a, it would be based on the whole number of transactions and so 10% would go evenly to everybody and then after that it's based on transaction counts. So that way the 10% would cover all the little small offices, it doesn't do the high volume, and then the higher volume offices would get high, higher amounts. So if you're doing a, a, a thousand transactions versus a hundred transactions, you'd be compensated proportionately. Okay. Now, running a business is a risky venture. As, as you know, the economy can take a downturn, supply costs can go up, any number of factors can impact a prof the profitability of a business. Businesses can lose money through no fault of their own. So in this case, Minlars is the culprit, this new software system, mm -hmm. but why should taxpayers pay for these mistakes? Well, a couple reasons. First of all, the OLA did a report, and they've, their determination was two reasons. There was two reasons for this. One was Minute, and one was DPS, that they did not have the people or the staff to do this software correctly. Secondly, these people can't raise their rates. In a business, if you, you know, are suffering because expenses are high, you can raise your rates to cover those things. We as the state set those rates, though, so they can't do any more rate changes than those we react. And we have not changed those rates yet at all. So if someone was doing 300 transactions per week and now they can only do 100 transactions per week because of the software's not working, that's the, you know, that's the problem. So we need to make sure that uh, I, think, I think the state does need to step in because they are the ones that did the software through Minute and DPS. So I believe since they couldn't change the rate that we do, we do deserve, to, or we, they deserve this from us. Uh, in committee, it was also mentioned that towing companies and salvagers and auto dealers have also been impacted by the problems with the Minlars rollout. Um, some have suggested they need help also. Do they need help? Do they need financial help? Well, you know, we've had some stakeholder meetings, and what I've heard from most of the stakeholders that I've been involved with is they really understand the deputy registers were the one that were hit the most. The rest of the stakeholders just want to see the system work. So they may have some different uh, uh, fees or looking at something like that. Like for example, the, the auto towers, they were paid on a transaction. So every time they pulled up to a vehicle, they ran the plate, they would access the system, they'd be charged, I believe it was $5.50. And a lot of that information was faulty or things like that. So what they would like to go to is an annual basis. So they pay an annual fee and then they can tap in as many times as they want. So they're looking for some changes like that. To my understanding, nobody has come to me for other uh, entities wanting a financial relief. They just want the system to work, and they understand the deputy registers. That's their core business uh, is these transfers, whereas the other ones, the auto dealers, the towing, they still have a business they can run. Yes, they're you know, suffering with some of the, the technicality issues they're doing, but they can still run their business. Senator Jasinski, thank you so much. You bet. Thank you.